by Clay Brook and an upper face of Mark Robinson. He's going to fight stuff in the new face. Hi everybody, my, my name is Mark Robinson from Northern Ireland and uh, today we're going to be tying a mayfly called the, the Sparkle Mayfly and this is it. Uh, it was patterned given to me by the well-known Irish angler Basil Seals and I hope you enjoy. The hook and the face today I'm using is a Camison B170 size 8. I normally tie these in either size 8s or size 10s, but for the purpose of the video, the size 8 will show you the fly in better detail. Tail on the fly is pheasant tail. Um, my flies normally have the two tails, or three. Um, believe me, if I only tie two or three tail fibres of this in, you can guarantee up to the first or second trout you get, you'll have no tails, so I always add a few extra. Basically, a small pinch is maybe eight to ten fibres. Just bring them 90 degrees to the stem, line them up, tear them off. The thread we're we'll using today is Uni 80, which is already waxed. Now, you'll see me starting this. I normally start about 4 to 5 mil back from the eye, and the reason I'm doing that will, will become clearer during the video. So, put down a good base of wax thread. You've got the uh, hook set quite deep in the vise there, Mark, I've noticed. Is that for a better grip, is it? Um, I normally keep them away from the furry tips. Um, it's not good for your face jaws, Lindsay, if you keep them in a three or four mil in. Yeah. Sometimes this is a regal face with stainless steel jaws, it doesn't really matter, but I don't want to end up wearing the furry tips of the jaws, and that's why I put them in. Some guys do, some guys put them further in, but yeah. that's close enough for me. I like to have uh, as much of the hook on show as I can get. With, yeah. You know, I, I use the tips mostly. Absolutely. I just thought it might have been for grip, you know? No, no. To be honest with you, I've had, I have this face about maybe a year now, and it's fantastic. I really, really, it's so versatile, so it can hold big hooks, small hooks and it's just a great face. So, pheasant tail, as I said before, select, just maybe 8 to 10 fibres or tear them off. Now, mayflies have big tails, some people do them a shank left length, some people do them a length and a half. I'm just going to do this roughly, a length, shank length and a half. Pinch and loop, Put in three or four turns, let it go. So we've got we've got the fibers tied in, three or four wraps of thread. And I'm snipping it off level with thread beds finished, and that's just to give me a level bed. Next material is uh glow bright. This is glow bright number four, this is going to be the rib. So and again, full length of the body and touch and turns again, just keeps everything nice and neat. Okay, I'm going to keep this just out of the road for this moment in time. So, we get to here, bring your thread back down. Okay. So you don't wax the glue break, it's just as is. Just as is. The next material I'm going to use, this is raffia, artificial raffia. Some people tie them with an actual. I find this being very versatile. You cut a strip off about two or three mil. So again, tie this in the full length of the body. And wrap it up. Now, for anybody who hasn't used this raffia before, the, the artificial, when it's cut thin, you have to treat it with respect because it can snap off at any moment. So hopefully, this will go on okay. So you'll see when I do one wrap, do an overlapping wrap, 
And that should kill most of the thread shining through. But don't worry if it does, it always it just adds a bit of character to the fly as well. I see a lot of the uh, tyres on the road this year, Mark, are, are using raffia as a material for tyres. Yeah. Uh, I haven't used it myself, but I think I'm going to try and pick some up. I can give a real translucent effect to the body yeah. and with that the body hackle palmer down it just it gives a fantastic color scheme now when this flies wet you'll see but it's a quite a fragile material so the will obviously would be the hackle palmer down it and then the glow bright rib sometimes i rib the fly with silver wire just for that bit of extra strength so the next material, this is yellow, it's a white and grizzle dyed yellow. It, the barbs don't need to be too big, you, you don't want them to overdress the fly and basically you want to keep nice even spacing just to show off the body of the fly as well. So we're going to tie this in. And what I say to you, I can't stress enough, plenty of wax in your thread, gives you plenty of grip. So, I'm going to come round, one full turn, and then a nice even turn just coming down the body. So you're about a couple, couple of millimetres? Yeah. You can put them closer if you want, but I just I think this lo looks well on the fly. I think if you, if you have it too tight, it, 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 you lose some of the movement, don't you? You can. So, bring your glow bright over, bring your, bring your feather up, and when you're working with this, you want your glow bright about four to five inches. Bring your thread over, catch that in, let go. And just come up through the fly, give it a wiggle, it'll help to stop trapping too many fibres. Yeah, and because you've kept it on the bobbin, it's much easier to turn up. Absolutely. Yeah. Glow bright is a fantastic material, but see if you have rough skin, you'll start getting, you'll start getting the, the thread frays. Oh. Yeah. So, come up the head haggle, pull that back, 90 degrees, move your wrapper thread. And put in about three wraps. Trim off. Pull any fibers going forward back. No, we did. There was put a bed of box thread just to tidy things up. Yeah. Snip off your hackle. I suppose the wax thread gives it a bed for the next raw materials to It does, well. you know, it also gives it a bit of extra protection to the thread. Stop thread will rot through time, but it yeah. just gives it a bit. Now, some people might ask, why do you leave this four to five mil gap? When you're using French partridge, if I just tie that in now, and this is this is a variation of the, the, the original pattern, if I don't support that French partridge, when that's fishing, that French partridge will lie flat onto the hook. Yeah, it just collapses in the water. Just collapses. With the extra support, that French partridge will flare. Yeah. And that's the movement you want. When you're bringing those flies through the, the wave or dibbling, you want as much movement into that fly as you can. So, the next tackle, I'm going to use. This was dyed for me by a, by a friend. It's a, sort of a yellowy olive. It doesn't matter, you can put yellow on it or you can put olive on it. But this is what I'm going to use for the supporting haggle. So I've stripped the flue off, as you see. And wax my feather again. And tie it in. You can tie it in by the, stock, the tip if you want it, but I want a couple of good wraps, sporting wraps here. 
sorry, I didn't catch that, Mark. Is that Grizzle? Died Grizzle? No, it was. Um, it was a variant. A guy called Sam McGowan died for me, and he rang. He says, "Look, I've died a cape here. It's a bit of variant." He says, "It's a yellowy, olivey." When I seen it, I thought, "Yeah, I liked it. I liked it." I'm gonna fold this back, and I'll probably put two, two wraps in here, or three. And that's going to be stiff enough to support the, yeah. the uh, French battery. Yeah, believe it or not. Again, come over your thread, cross over, and tie off. So, and then coming forward, finger and thumb. Just lock that down, and again, level off where your French party is just going to be. Can't stress this enough. Great tool, an old toothbrush. Give everyone a brush at this stage. Just listen, gets all the crap fibers loosened up. Now, this is uh, French partage. It's dyed light olive. Okay, what you're looking for in this feather is that nice band across the top. So, I'm going to make this into a Christmas tree and just watch. You, put, you pull all the fibers down, stroke all them all down, hold it by the tip. And this is the fact you want. Now you can tie this in by the tip and fold the tip back. But as I'm using well waxed thread, I'll just trim the tip a bit. Like so. So again, thread's already waxed. Okay. Next process, scrub. You can use hackle pliers if you want. This stock's long enough. Fold these fibers back. And what you want to do is this. Start wrapping and with this finger, you trap, rotate your hackle and sweep. So again, fold your hackle, trap with this finger, let the feather go, bring around the other side towards you, and sweep those fibers, and just continue in that manner. So I try to use as much of the French partridge as I can. It's just again, just to add that additional movement. So you can see now, the hackle stock's getting a bit thick. Bring your feather over. One more time, we'll see. Yeah, that's okay. Bring your feather 90 degrees, sweep everything back. Don't worry about the fibers at this stage. Bring your thread over. And put in another two lock and turns or three. And let go. Now, this stage, just give it a slight pull back and the reason I'm doing that it just gets all those previous wraps bedded in tight together come in with your scissors and snip off now this looks like you just got out of bed if you had her unlike me it'd be all over the place so get yourself a toothbrush and start brushing everything. And what that'll do, any trap fibers, it'll loosen them up and get them all nicely sweeping back. If you get a fiber like this that's not playing, just come in with your snippers, scissors and snip off. Okay, one final brush. We're going to 
your stock with earnings. If you get a small piece of stock stacking up, come in with your fingernail and just flatten that out. Like so. So we're going to start finishing our fly now. Take your time when you're doing this. You want to get a nice, neat, small head. And the guy said to me one time, famous fly tower Paul Little, make every wrapper thread you do on any fly has to have a purpose. He's round the corner actually. He is, <laughs> he is. And when Paul said that to me, I said, you know what, he's right. Every turn of thread has to have a purpose. And if you follow that rule, you'll tie neater flies. Okay. So I'm happy with that head. Come in with the whip finish tool. And again, take your time. That's about five turns. And this this is just a habit of mine. I always do another whip finish. Three or four turns. Just in case if your thread ever breaks at this stage, you have the backup then that you put your previous wraps in, whip finish, and it's not going to fall apart on you. Now, one final brush just to see how everything's sitting. I'm happy with that. I got this tip from Davy McPhail. Davy would finish a lot of his flies with super glue, first coat of super glue. And what it does is, although you think that's just a smooth head, it just fills all the gaps, gives you a nice smooth head. And trim your brush down, that's how much mine's trimmed. It just gives you a lot of more. Yeah, more my pr brush always looks like a chimney sweep. Yeah, and don't load, overload the brush. Just a nice light coat around the fly. I always split the head up into four sections, top, bottom, and both sides. Leave that to dry for about 10 seconds. Varnish the museum, fenders. And another tip I'll give is this is dub needle. Don't shove your double needle all the way into your varnish. You just want a small, small amount on the tip. Because if you overload the needle, the capillary action of the hackle will draw that varnish into your, into your hackle and you don't want that. So, that's as much varnish I have. You barely see it. I always start at the side facing me. Top. Can I turn this? Yeah. And just for security, check your hook out, make sure there's no varnish in it. A final check. I'm not happy with that. That looks lovely. And that's the Sparkle Mayfly. I hope you enjoyed it and tie a few up and definitely try them. If you're ever coming over to Ireland, try them in the big Irish locks. I can guarantee you that'll catch you fish. Brilliant. Thanks very much for taking the time out, Mark. I'm not an expert at this. Try the flies. I'm thinking, going, what's Lindsay going to say in his video?